welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we'll be shining a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and today my co-host Ryan and I are welcoming Ben Wallace to talk about Broken, a two-player tragic romance RPG. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Character Creation Spotlight, Ben. It is really great to have you here with us. Thank you so much. I really can't tell you how much it means to be here. I'm really excited to be talking with you both. I'm so excited for this. Yep. I'm so excited <laughs> it's, for this. It's I'm so just going to like whisper it, and then Ryan, you can make it louder, and I'm, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> oh, I it's, can't wait. Yeah, I am, I am very excited. Vibrating. Um, ben, could you uh, start off by telling us uh, a bit about yourself and what sort of projects you have going on uh, right now, aside from Broken, and maybe where people can find you online? Yeah, absolutely. So I am Ben, and I'm also known sometimes on social media as that gamer priest. So you don't forget me. Oh, yeah, that's that gamer priest. Uh, and, oh, that uh, one, not the other yeah, one. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, no, I'm the co-founder of the All Ports Open Network. The All Ports Open Network has been in, around for about five years. We do podcasts and streams related to teach RPG content and stories, uh, audio dramas, and we recently launched Apon Games, which is our TTRPG publishing wing of the All Ports Open Network. Mm -hmm. And we, so we sort of specialize in making games that are all about telling great stories. They also are good at doing like background work for, a lot of them are good at doing background work for storytelling. So um, world building uh, and sort of like expanding a setting or even games that might be full, like that a author might use to help set groundwork work for a fictional setting or something like that. So that's kind of our uh, heart and soul of what we do uh, in our uh, in our in our Apon Games uh, game wing that we recently launched. So we just launched a game called The Hard Lessons that just finished its funding. Uh, and uh, and so, yeah, so that's kind of what we do. I'm also the I'm also the host of Holy Happy Hour Batman, which is a Monday night uh, TTRPG talk show mm -hmm. where here's the gaming and geek world. Join me to talk about life, faith, spirituality. You, the two of you have been on that show. It was a lot yeah. of fun. It I really enjoy that show. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, that's that's sort of who I am and what I do. Very cool. Well, Very thanks cool. so much for being here. No, um, thank you. Since this is an abridged version of our normal format, uh, we will be sticking to the highlights of the system uh, with special focus on character creation. So without further ado, how about we find out what this game is all about? What's in a game? All right. Uh, could you start off by telling us a bit about the core concept for Broken? Yeah, so Broken is a, so it's funny, I say, I kind of introduce it in different ways depending on my audience, since this is a very TTRPG audience, I will say it's a duet cooperative storytelling game. Uh, it's an artifact and ritual based game centered around telling the story of a breakup of some art between two characters. Usually mm -hmm. it's told a romantic story. And so you create two characters, you uh, create their relationship and their relationship dynamics, you gather uh, it's like I said, it's artifact based. So you gather 10 physical objects that over the course of 10 scenes, as you are slowly breaking up, you break each of these objects until all you're left with is broken objects and broken hearts. Uh, and the game Oof. is over. And it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, it can, good, but like, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. it is. It can be pretty gut wrenching. It's, it's a, a very, thing. yeah, it's a very emotional game, very emotionally deep game, very visceral, uh, very tactile, physical, can be very cathartic. Yeah. So sort of all of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We always ask what kind of setting you play in. Um, in this one, you are playing out a relationship. So I sort of assume it kind of depends on the relationship. Yeah. Is this game kind of meant to do like only realistic relationships or can you do kind of anything that you want to with it? Yeah, I was really intentional about this when I wrote the game. I very much wanted it to have flexibility that the like immediate thing that comes to mind when you think about the game or when you read the book or go to play it might be like creating a very realistic relationship uh, that tells a story of two people who you might see and read in real life and they're story of their breakup but i really wanted it to have the flexibility and i use examples in the rules in the rule text of 
all kinds of things like a space emperor and their like uh, I think I can't remember what phrase I used like love prince or something like I really wanted to like <laughs> just put out who knows what kinds of characters you might come up with and I really wanted the game to both to do two things at the same time this is such an important like design thing for me was I wanted it to both very much capture as much as I could manage to figure out how to do very much capture the visceral feelings of a breakup a romantic breakup and also to have enough flexibility that if two people wanted to play it in kind of a lighthearted, almost, maybe not quite lighthearted, but a little bit lighthearted kind of way. Like we had playtesters who uh, cre- who told the story of their D&D characters. They were already pre-existing D&D characters from their mm-hmm. campaign that had gone their separate ways. And they decided to play this game to tell how the two of them broke up as like adventuring partners. And mm. so I very much wanted the game to have the enough flexibility that you could be as creative as you want with it. So yeah, so mm. like the kind of, the kind of like default setting I think most people will think about when they read the book or play the game is a real life romantic relationship. But it certainly, I think, has the flexibility to do lots of things. And so one of the things we might get to do, and I hope we do, is if the game goes over our crowdfunding goals and we can do stretch goals, we have some designers lined up who will write scenarios for the game. Mm. Oh, okay. Scenarios are sort of like, pre-packaged situations like characters there's their meet cute who they are where they are the objects list that you would gather or write yeah. down on a popsicle stick uh basically all the stuff you would need to play the game and uh let you jump right in and i really want those people to like do out of the box things i could see that being really helpful for people too though because this game having read through it a couple of times is um like really powerful like there's a lot happening there's a lot of emotions and i think you know, having the opportunity to play with a play set that somebody else wrote that kind of gives you at least that little bit of distance from the subject matter yeah, might might be really helpful for some people because I can see very easily Mm -hmm. as somebody, like if I sat down to play this, even with the intention of being like, I'm not going to play my relationship. I'm not going to play my relationship. I am not going to play my relationship. Oops, (laughs) look it. (laughs) It's my relationship. (laughs) So it might be kind of nice to have some like, pieces to sort of separate you at least Mm -hmm. a little bit you know that might be good not only on like an entry level thing but also just like an emotional strength and wherewithal kind of thing to have Mm -hmm. too that'd be really cool to see what people what people bring to it though you did one um recently with uh was with Dora from um, Alchemistresses too, didn't you? Oh my gosh, that, that was like, one of the most. I didn't yeah. get to watch yet. And yeah. I'm so like, I need to find time to sit down and do it because as soon as I saw that the two of you were doing it together, I was like, I need to know how this goes. <laughs> it was so good. I could not recommend it enough. The whole stream is very long because we created out. We did a we did a mashup, which I'm now kind of obsessed with doing with with Broken, but we yeah. did we we used Alchemistresses to create alchemistress's characters fully and authentically alchemistress's characters mm. and which then, already has like very yeah you know, like complicated love story stuff happening yeah, exactly mm. and then we took two of those characters and we just played broken with them and it was such a great way Ugh. to play broken like it was so fun and that and dora yeah. was amazing and it was it was such a great yeah, it was such a great version of the game. It helped me as the designer to be like, wow, yeah, the flexibility that this game has to do different things is so cool. Seeing it in like a magical girl anime setting. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. one, of, one of the things I, I really have come to enjoy about playing Broken with people, because this is kind of like my favorite stuff about it is playing with people who have ideas that aren't mine. That's like my favorite thing. And so yes. like one of the things people have kind of introduced to me that I didn't anticipate for this game necessarily, which is that you can take like playing what I'm calling playing in the margins. So like I played a rom-com and with somebody and it was like a very stereotypical eighties rom-com. And Mm -hmm. we, the way we kind of set those scenes was that it was like, all of the broken scenes that we played out were like the moments right after the scene that would be in the 80s rom-com movie. So if you picture like an 80s rom-com movie, Mm. you know, you have right, so we would sort of say, okay. It's always like the moment they get together, then the movie's over. Yeah, yeah. Or the scene, like the good thing happens and then we never like see what happens after that yeah mm-hmm. and, and so yeah. even like along the way so like we did like there was you know how a lot of 80s movies there's like the the male protagonist shows up the uh the antagonist in a big scene where everyone ends up cheering at, for the protagonist by the end of yeah. it we did one of those but like 
the what you forgot about because I, we haven't said this on the show, but the main scene framing is the ritual for that is that one person says, remember when, and then sets a scene. And the other mm-hmm. player says, but you forgot about, and sets a scene. So what, the way we treated that was the but you forgot about were basically all like, like in this case, you forgot about how when that thing was happening that was so great that everybody was cheering for, like you left me behind or you hurt me in some way. So we were mm-hmm. kind of playing in the margins of the 80s rom-com story. And then with Alchemistresses, like what was so fun about that was it was like the in the it was like scenes that were part of the anime season for the Alchemistresses characters. Mm-hmm. And oh. so like we did we had combat in Broken. Like we had like magical girl combat in that game which i just i never expected (laughs) to have that um and yeah yeah, so it was just a really fun way to play it we'll have to put a link to that in our show notes too because um we had so much fun with alchemistresses and with the Mm -hmm. complicated relation stuff and relationship stuff happening in there it's so good good. it's so good i love that game um and you know i know something that our our audience enjoyed and i love this game like and just like the mashup of the two like it just like that's too many feelings to feel i think (laughs) maybe (laughs) but uh i'm no expert so i'm sure it's it'll be okay Mm. You'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> well. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Too many feelings. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, well, you've got my mind reeling with ideas for characters for this game right now. Um, yeah. But before we can before we can dive in uh, to uh, more of that, we need to find out, like, what sort of materials do we need to play a game of Broken? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's two fundamental ways to play the game. And uh, for, for both of them, you need like index cards. You need you need a total of 12 index cards, five for each player character. And you can use like, I've used all kinds of stuff, scraps of paper, stuff like that to play. But basically uh, six index cards, um, five for each person to write their traits down, one to just kind of write a simple character description. And then you need to get, objects because it's an artifact based game so one way to play the kind of i don't know if i want to call it the core way to play or not but one way to play is to find and gather 10 physical real life objects that you will then break over the course of the scenes so sometimes people bring five each sometimes one person brings all 10 sometimes people go to a thrift store together and buy all the objects that mm-hmm. sounds fun. It is my favorite way to play the game. It's it's an absolute Brian, delight. If we play this one, this is how that would be how I would want to do it. I think that sounds fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, not, yeah. Well, we're not going to bring in the the TV or uh, no the, the stereo. <laughs> no, we'll go get our own stuff. Yeah. yeah, and just grab stuff from around your house. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, oh, you know, I have done that too. Stuff that, and and sometimes hey, sometimes it's a good way to clear out stuff you don't want to have anymore around your house. But the uh-huh. other way to play, and oh, I don't have it with me. Not that not that this is a video medium because it's not, but another way to play is you can have popsicle sticks and mm-hmm. you can create your 10 objects by writing them on the popsicle sticks. They're really convenient, easy to find, and then they break really easily. They snap. I found that they're like just such a really great way to play because they give you a really good snap when you snap them in half. Really oh, cathartic. Yeah. Like. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and you need a device to record a voicemail memo um, because oh. one of the things you do in the game is record a message for the other person. Yeah, that's that's very cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I, I was reading through that mechanic uh, earlier and I was like, oh, that's that's brilliant. I should find the note that I wrote on that mechanic. Uh, I believe it amounted something to just like, my God, Ben, why? <laughs> 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 when uh-huh. I was making comments on these things. Um, so good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's what it just my God, Ben, why? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, you tell me when that, when you want me to talk about why and we can talk about it because, uh, yeah. Um, well, uh, our next question here, we can kind of start yeah. getting into some of this stuff. Um, this game is a little bit different from most games. Yeah. There isn't just a straight character creation, um, but it also plays really differently. So can you just give us kind of a quick rundown to start maybe um, of just how this game works and how character creation especially works in this yeah in this system absolutely so basically you decide the two people who are going to play the game decide together what kind of scenario they want to play in what kind of relationship story they want to tell what types of characters they want to make so you might do that by collecting the 10 objects first and then being inspired by them 
or you might decide beforehand and then collect and make the objects based on that. It's kind of up to the players how they want to approach that. Mm. Or, like over the weekend, um, I recorded a, a game with my wife that we're going to put on Pod of Love as an actual play of the game. I'm actually mm-hmm. sitting here right now surrounded by the objects we got from the thrift store for that. And so like we based that game off of the objects that we found. And so we like, for example, we got a tiny violin that is actually a musical box that plays My Heart Will Go On from Titanic. <gasps> oh, my God. Which is, I think, the <laughs> ultimate broken object. Like, the, I mean, when I say that, I that's mean, like yeah, perfect. Exactly. Wow. I don't know that we'll ever top that object for breaking. I'm kind of like sad that you're going to like break it. Oh, we did like, already. It's, bro- it's, oh. it's in here. It is a it is a tiny broken violin. <laughs> it's the oh. saddest, tiniest violin. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it still plays My Heart go- Will Go On, which is kind of the best part. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so <laughs> plays it. That's even more perfect. I know. It, it really is. So It's Heart Will Go On, little violin. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so once you've decided like what your scenario is going to be, what you do is you uh, decide, OK, we're each going to play this kind of character. You take a few minutes to write down a, a few sentences about your character and a name on one of the index cards that you set aside. So you like basically what the camera would see as it's panning over them on like a TV show or movie, essentially. And then... You take what you do then is you take the five index cards and you tell each other what you wrote down first. So you kind of have an idea what the the other person is playing. Then you take your five index cards and you create five traits. But these are kind of different than a lot of other games because what they really are are things that you like, like or love or are attracted to about the other person or things that you like about being in a relationship with them and Mm. they're from your character's perspective so that means that they're they're subjective they're not objective Mm -hmm. so like for example one example that i use in the book because this came from a real game is that i might write down that I hope you don't mind me using your name, Ryan. Uh, I might write down that Ryan likes to be teased on as one of my things. That's from my character's perspective. Ryan might really hate being teased, which is probably where the tension of the game will come from. But that is what my character likes about being in a relationship with Ryan. Or I might just Mm say um, someone's, you know, beautiful tentacles or whatever, depending on the kind of characters you're playing. And then those end up being things that you become disillusioned with over the course of the game. So the game is a ritual. Every scene, you somebody you take turns, someone picks an object. It's just meant to be a, a, a prompt, an inspiration mm-hmm. for setting the scene. If you had a record, you might do a scene based around music or dancing or a record store. I mean, it's completely up to you. But it's just sort of a, you pick up an object you um, to help inspire you for a scene. And then the person who has the object starts by saying, remember when? and then describes essentially what the scene is. And then the other person adds a twist or complication by saying, but you forgot about. And then they add that twist or complication in there. Mm. Yeah. So I really loved that part of it when I was reading through Mm. it because I think it gives people a chance to learn and understand empathy in a breakup in a way that we don't always get to when we're right in the middle of it. Yeah. Right. I mean, even that example of like, I I like that Ryan loves to be teased. Yeah. Mm. But Ryan might not really actually like to be teased. Um, the idea that we see a breakup only from our own perspective, yeah. and that might not be the only truth that there is. Exactly. But there's something kind of in the middle. And I, I love when role playing games give us the opportunities to learn things like empathy and compassion. Yeah. In sort of a safe space. Mm -hmm. And this game plays with those kinds of things a lot with that, like, I remember it this way, but you know what? You also forgot that there was this whole other part of it that, like, I associate with that situation that you don't even recall. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool and it's really deep. And the way that you've done it is, like, is so quick that, like, you don't realize it's happening. I, it's just, it's very smart. Thank it's you. It's very smart. Thank you. Yeah, I really wanted it to. So I work with a lot of people going through relationship struggles and I'm mm-hmm. a product of divorce myself. Or a product is a weird way to phrase that, but I, right, went, through yeah, a, so. I went through a real 
difficult a survivor to, of. Yeah, there you go. I, I, I see. The reason why I said that is because I like try not to use that phrase because it just feels a little bit more than I want to say about it, especially for my ex. Like, I don't want to makes me feel like yeah. I'm saying my ex is a killer. <laughs> so right. like, no, I mean, I do. I do feel that way sometimes, too. Yeah. yeah when I say that, because yeah. it's like, OK, it's like really not like the worst person. Like, I just saw him yesterday. He's fine. Um, <laughs> well, but like, yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. but like, yeah, I mean, you did. You survived it. You lived yes. through the, the divorce. Yeah. Like, even if you didn't necessarily need to live through the person, you lived through the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really wanted it to I really wanted to explore those themes you just described. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I had a I think I lost my actual train of thought. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. It wasn't, <laughs> trust me, it was me, not you. But, um, but yeah, so that was intentional, like wanting, oh, so not, yeah, so not seeing things the same way, looking back and seeing it differently, all that stuff was really core to what I wanted to, you know, it, have the game explore because of the fact that those are, I, I, I wanted people to be able to process those very real things that happen when you go through a breakup that you, that, you know, and I wanted the game to reflect that. And I wanted care. Mm -hmm. I wanted characters and character creation to reflect that a lot too, which is why the character creation is so intentional. Yeah. I Absolutely. think those are things that you just in, in a relationship, you're just too close to it to really do. And even once you're so far removed from it, you don't have like the strength of memory necessarily to, to do that kind of work. And so I really appreciate that this kind of gives you the space to do some of that work, even if it's not directly related to your own trauma or breakup or however you want to word it. Yeah. Um, but that it still gives you the chance to sort of stretch some of those empathy muscles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Yeah. I really wanted to, you were just reminded me, I wanted to layer those things like the ability to learn that or think about those things or or experience like some empathy development, I wanted to layer that into the game so that it just kind of happened very quickly and seamlessly without mm -hmm. being hopefully too heavy handed. At least that's what I wanted to do. So yeah, there's no part in there where you're like, and now it's time to learn the lesson that you should have <laughs> learned all along. Like, yeah. like there's no feeling like that of like, I'm sitting down to do this because I need to learn. You know, it yeah. just feels like it, it came very now. I was I like honestly was shocked at like how seamlessly it seems to just sort of fit in there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm really excited about this game. I know. In case people can't tell, like, I'm really, I'm like, <laughs> I'm so excited. I, I feel like I, I, from hearing other people read the book and play the game, I feel like I met my design goals, which is always a really good feeling when you're trying yeah. to design something mm -hmm. that you believe in very much, like I believe in right. this. Right. Well, and, and something that sounds like it's so close yes. to you personally, too. Oh, yeah. goodness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's like the closer you are, the more you want it. To yep. be a thing that exists in the world, yeah. but the harder it is to do. Exactly. So yeah. true. Oh, uh, well, I am I am very excited to get to uh like trying out yeah. the character creation in this. Um yeah. and it's uh two characters yeah. for each scenario, right? So mm -hmm. I'm wondering uh if if we're all okay, can we create three pairs? Do we have time? Do we, we have time? Is it fast enough? It's I think so. I, I mean, it probably okay. depends on how much. It probably depends on uh, the way I mean, we I approach time, it. But yeah. But yeah, it's more, you know, like, I don't know if you have dinner to do or whatever. I'm personally good to go. Okay. Yeah, I let's should do be it fine then. too. Let's do it. Wonderful. Uh, okay. Let's let's make some people. I don't have any popsicle sticks, but I do have no. index cards. <laughs> <laughs> let's make some people. I, all I have is uh, my notepad plus plus. Notepad plus plus. Is you always, why do you always that. say that? Why can't you just say notepad? Because it's not notepad. It's notepad plus plus. plus, plus. Okay. It's notepad plus one. No, it's plus because plus. plus plus is programmer speak for add one to the previous oh, result. Oh. <laughs> I have just a butt ton of notepads. That's awesome. See, I'm not. Some of them have stuff on them, I think. But so for the purposes of this, I'm just going to use a. Uh, a Google spreadsheet, actually, or not spreadsheet even, but like just a Google Doc, honestly, just for for, for doing a uh, for doing this podcast. Uh, it's uh, okay. you know so easy peasy. Yeah, we probably could all like be in the same one, and then we could see what we were doing, maybe. Or I could just write on my note cards because I like writing on note cards. There you go. Either way. All right. So, uh, who wants to start first, and how uh, should should Amelia and I 
Go yeah, through. would you like to walk us through how to do it? Without a doubt, first? I would love to do that. So, okay. so I, so this is what I uh, will say. You just sort of decide. Uh, here's what I think would be fun: this decide whether you want to be inspired by ten objects or whether you want to create the scenario first, and then you can just kind of write down five. Uh, like, so either you'll write, either way you'll write ten, five objects each, but you can decide whether you want to write the objects before or after you decide on the scenario. What are you okay. thinking, Ryan? So I what I had a s- very specific scenario in mind, and I don't mind. Is it magical girls and necromancers? I, oddly, no. What? <laughs> but, but why are uh, we here? We could do magical girls and necromancers for this, and then I could save this one for for Ben uh, okay. if we want. Should I throw out my idea? Yeah, let me hear your idea, and then I can okay. I can yes or no it. So in, in my Highlander game, our final gathering, uh, uh-huh. the dreaded reflections of the immortal soul. Uh-huh. Um, there is a character archetype, um, I, I believe it's uh, the love interest. Mm-hmm. And part of the love interest story in the game is you were once in love with, uh, reciprocally, uh, reciprocatingly, uh, with another character yeah. at, the, at the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and, and then you broke up eventually. Yeah. But Highlander, being you're playing Immortals... Uh-huh. That breakup could have spanned decades. I see. Oh, that's so cool. See, yeah. I think maybe that you should save this for Ben because Ben understands any of these references. That's true. I, I have actually not ever big... seen a Highlander okay. movie yeah. or care Amazing. about Highlander. No, that's so perfect. I'm a pretty I big think Highlander maybe fan, I am so yeah. Not the target audience. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I very I ben, very much ben am. Ben is like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> very much am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so Great. let's lead into our nonsense then, Amelia. Okay. All right. Uh, the uh, I'll be a necromancer. You'll be in magical girl, all right? Yeah. No. Nope. Oh my god, should we? <laughs> no. <laughs> that might be too much. <laughs> Ryan's like, I can't play a necromancer convincingly. <laughs> okay. So then, then what I would say is, this like each of you come up with five objects mm-hmm. and a name and description for your character. Um. And then you can kind of decide a little bit like about the scenario, like, you know, are we already together at the start of the game? How long? Those kinds of details. Um, and then you can do traits. Okay. Oh, wonderful. So let's think of some objects here. Okay. Oh, no, my pen's like out of ink. I'll think while I refill my pen. It's great audio. It certainly makes the whole process a lot faster when you do it the uh, writing objects down on popsicle sticks way versus having to collect physical objects. Yes. It makes it a faster process for a quick game. It also just it is a very different process because I'd say it feels different. Like I feel like you're just not attached to the thing the same way. Well, yeah, that's an interesting point because I wonder about that. I have seen some people pretty emotional about a non-existent <laughs> physical pretty object. Pretty emotional about that popsicle stick. Yeah, because of what it came to represent. It's interesting how we put meaning into things. Yeah. Yeah. But but the meta nature of finding and gathering objects is also just a very special thing to do. Yeah, Ryan and I keep talking about trying to find some time to get together because we're really not that we've, you know, been together in person like all of three times. But yeah. we only live an hour and a half apart. Right. right. Um now he's got his little podcast studio, so I think it'd be fun to go find a little thrift shop in Appleton and go oh, buy absolutely. some stuff and, and play this. I, I agree, 100%. Uh, I'm trying to think of what kind of objects would I have. How many uh, do you have? I have one. I've got one so far, too. All right. Um, should, we, should we lift them off uh, as we go? Um, sure, we can. So far, I have an empty love potion bottle. Oh, I've got the transformation brooch of a lost teammate. Ooh. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is like. <laughs> it's so good. Um, okay, I've got another one. Okay. Um, our shared diary. Oh, oh my gosh. <sighs> <laughs> I have a broken sword from a fallen foe. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Is it one of your friends? We may never know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I feel like this is an enemies to lovers to enemies situation. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that classic trope. Uh, it's a good trope. It is. 
I'm going to say a dried bouquet of flowers oh, that's from good. a date night. Oh, I love that. What is that? That's three. Hmm. Because it's me making a character, I'm going to say a tiny crystal flamingo. Nice. Um, the remains of the orb of darkness that almost consumed us. Ooh, <laughs> so classic, good. classic. <laughs> I love it. The ring I was going to give you. Oh my gosh. I think that is. Five. Um, my favorite coat that you gave me when we were just friends. Oh, very nice. Is that five for you then? I've got one more. Okay. Hmm. These are already brutal. They really are. Oh, oh no. Um, Ryan, my, Ryan, oh my, no. My transformation brooch. <gasps> <laughs> You're right. These ones oh. are already brutal. <laughs> we haven't even done anything to we them yet. We haven't done anything with them. They're just brutal. Giving them zero context. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so I'm, wow. I'm just going to read mine once real quick so that we have it all out. Um, yep. I have a tiny crystal flamingo. A dried bouquet of flowers from a date night, a broken sword from a fallen foe, an empty love potion bottle, and the ring I was going to give you. That's so good. And I've got uh, the transformation brooch of a lost teammate, our shared diary, the remains of the orb of darkness that almost consumed us, my favorite coat that you gave me when we were just friends, my transformation brooch. Oof. Why do we have a shared diary? We were in deep. Yeah. Man, you got to be like <laughs> real together to share a diary. Uh-huh. You really do. I can't even keep one myself. <laughs> it's intense. <laughs> it's really intense. Uh, so you're going to want to now like basically write, um, create a name and a couple of sentences about who your character is. You, we've kind of gotten some themes already for this game, including like maybe a... Uh, Enemies to, to lovers to enemies situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know a good name. Names are tough. Names are hard. Necromancer names are hardest. Mm -hmm. Ryan can just be like Twinkle Toes or something. It's a, it's a magical girl <laughs> name I just made up. <laughs> I was thinking Bubblegum something. Mm, Bubblegum uh, Drop. Bubblegum Drop is actually a pretty good name. <laughs> I like it. So then, I, now I uh, need bubble one, bubble first name uh, gumdrop. Gumdrop last is name. the last name. I love yeah. that. Um, pronoun. Okay, in she, which case, her. did we get married? Is my last name gumdrop now too? Oh, I think my name is darkness gumdrop. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, what was your name again then? Or are you still figuring out first name? Well, it's gonna be darkness. Darkness. It's gonna be my first name, and then we'll have a shared last name of gumdrop. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, okay. <laughs> Where, did you used to go by Lady Darkness or something like that? Um, I mean, probably because I couldn't go by Gumdrop. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be Lady Darkness. That's fine. That's amazing. She, her. Darkness Gumdrop. <laughs> Darkness Gumdrop. That's so good. <laughs> and Bubble Gumdrop. Bubble Gumdrop. Bubble and Darkness. I can just picture like the wedding like uh you know like the uh placeholders and the and the yeah. invitations and all this stuff now yeah oh so good so yeah describe basically write a brief description for your character and then when you're done you can read them to one another yeah i'm trying to think like what kind of descriptors i need aside from necromancer named darkness and like ryan what descriptors do you need besides magical girl named bubbles Bubble, bubble gum. <laughs> bubble gum drop. Bubble gum drop, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that pretty much speaks it for itself. It kind of does. I mean, it you does. I don't really know I that mean, we need I, a whole lot more. I, I like that the audience can insinuate anything they want from that. It's true. <laughs> it's pretty true. Uh, very, very colorful, yeah. Yeah. So what you do then is you write five traits and you can kind of do this. There's like the way I typically do it, but you could do it the way you did the objects too. So you could either write all five of them and then take turns reading them to each other. Or you could, uh, you know, do what you just did for the objects and just do one at a time. The other thing I would say is you end up stacking your five cards in a stack. And I encourage people in the book to to try to, for whatever makes sense, and it's not like a hard and fast thing by any means, to just go from kind of like the more 
lighthearted ones to the like harder ones, the ones that are obviously okay. like tougher emotionally, maybe so similar yeah. to complex in, in when you read them back, um, not necessarily when writing them, but um, when reading them back or, or certainly when stacking them in order, because it just sort of helps okay. with the curve of the game. So these ones I'm writing traits about Ryan. It's something you're mm-hmm. uh, attracted to. What I to. believe about him. Yeah, something you like okay. about him or love about him or are attracted to or like about being in a relationship with him. So, or her, I mean, I guess, for bubblegum. So like it could be her bright blue hair it could be one of yours if you were to write something like that. I'm going to put endlessly optimistic. Or it could be something like... Uh, she makes me feel safe. That's something that's like, mm. you know, yeah. the way she makes you like the way the other person makes you feel. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I've got so far uh, her sly smile when she gets a devious idea. Very nice. The way she gets so excited at new opportunities. Her villainous laugh. <laughs> the fact that she doesn't actually like rainbows. True or false, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh, the excitement in her eyes when getting to use her powers, which is necromancy. Yep. <laughs> the way she recognizes when my idea is actually better. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I love that one. I was like, what can I write that's like kind of loaded? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Um, the seriousness and focus she has in battle. Nice. I'm going to say how she cares more about everyone else than herself. Oh, <laughs> sometimes it's those that are the most brutal in this game because when, because Cause you know, it's not true. <laughs> the things, well, you're at least going to become disillusioned with it later and the process of becoming disillusioned with it is going to hurt. So mm-hmm. her soft spot for puppies. Oh, oh my gosh. That's true. I- I do I do have one though? It's true. <laughs> Just more. I love puppies more than you. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll find out. We're gonna have to be disillusioned about that later. Disillusioned. You're gonna be like, we have 87 dogs here, woman. Enough. <laughs> and they're all skeletons. They're all skeletons. <laughs> it's not saving them if they don't have the skin anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're not saving anything. <laughs> I have five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, so let's see here. I think actually I kind of wrote them in an order that was already a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> they got worse as I went along, let's say. That's fine. All right. So we got our traits. What's next? Yeah, that's that's basically character creation, because Ooh. once you've done that, you're ready to play the scenes. Uh, the one thing I didn't say before is that uh, you at the end of every scene, you uh, you should have. Oh, I didn't mention that you need to have a candle to play this game and preferably a fire safe bowl. You don't need to have one to make characters because we're not actually playing all the way through. Mm-hmm. But you'll want to have a candle with a fire safe bowl, because what, what you're going to do is as you. Each scene you're going to work towards in the narrative kind of together because it's a cooperative game. You're going to work towards trying to have one of your characters disillusioned with the top trait in that stack. So, um, Ryan, what's your top uh, trait uh, in your five that would be showing? Um, so the one that I had here, like, do I pick one or do yeah, the you would first put them in any order you want to? So which one would be your top one for your like, oh. you know, showing at the start of the game? So right okay. now, mine is endlessly optimistic. Endlessly optimistic. So, so you yeah. might be, you might work towards becoming one of, you know, her, your character becoming disillusioned with that. And then the way the scene, once you feel like, once someone feels like their top card is, they've become disillusioned with that trait, they can end the scene right then and there at that at, at that moment by saying, "I used to think, or I used to love, or I used to like," and reading Oof. what's on the card, and then burn, and then you burn it and you break the object, and that ends oh. the scene. Fire. There you go. <laughs> this is no longer safe for work podcast. Yeah, I used to think you're in the building. I used to love that you're. I used to think that you're endlessly optimistic, and then you would wow you would burn the trait. Oh, uh. so it becomes kind of um, rough because <laughs> you know uh, becoming disillusioned with those things is the meat of the game and uh, yeah, uh, and the scenes that you play out. You are not endlessly optimistic anymore, right? Oh, no. Look at that. 
I hope you have a fire safe bowl. <laughs> I have I have a, like a, a little candle. There bowl. you go. It, <laughs> it already went out. It's apparently not very flammable index card. Turns out it's just the corner of it. <laughs> kind of disappointing, honestly. Now you're just endlessly. Oh, no. Endlessly nothing. You're endlessly nothing, Ryan. <laughs> oh, that poor bubblegum drop. Yeah, poor bubblegum drop. I kind of like, I wonder how this would go, though. Like how, what what things do you think that you would become particularly disillusioned with ryan how do you see this going do you want to do our fanfic now or should we wait till the end oh gosh uh let's wait let's wait on that uh, i i really want to see how the other pairs uh kind of come to be okay all right well why don't you since you have your idea for your highlander one why don't you go for it oh sure all right uh ben yes are you you're down for this Highlander uh across millennia relationship breakup? Yeah, let's do it. Amazing. Absolutely. So what yeah, do you want to Okay, Highlander. Do we want why don't we do this? Why don't we talk about the scenario a little bit first and then do our objects since we already sure. know it's Highlander and we both kind of know stuff about that. So yeah. Um so we're gonna do uh, a, a story over a great like a significant amount of time. Yep. Uh, is sort of the end of the story, the breakup, is that sort of modern day, are we thinking? Um, it could be any time, yeah. I would say. Um, like, it could be hundreds of years in the past. It could be, like, uh, you know, a year or two before the, the final gathering or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I like... Um... I like the idea that maybe they haven't in the final gathering, they haven't seen each other for decades. Yeah. So, but maybe it's, so maybe it's like a 20th century breakup scene, but then of course, you know, who knows how far back. So how far we could say, we, who knows, we know how far back, uh, when, uh -huh. do, when do we want to say we have met? How, how, how long has this been relationship? Oh, could, could, you know, we met like probably what, 2000 years ago I or something. That. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. And like, probably had a relationship as just like we knew each other as immortals and then kept running into each other and then eventually we decided hey there's there's something here yeah uh maybe a few hundred years down the line after we met so like maybe uh medieval period of time or or later uh all the way through uh like early victorian would be a good starting point of a relationship. Cool. That sounds great. All right. So that sounds good. That's probably enough for us to go off of to then go ahead and do the other thing. So why don't we each do five objects and and then we do you want to do, do you want to do them in turns or do you want to do them and then read them back? Uh, let's do them as we as we figure them out. OK, cool. You know, it's really interesting because this is definitely one where we could kind of accidentally duplicate. <laughs> well, yeah. So reading them to each other as we write them will help that not happen. Since it's Highlander, I just feel like there's some obvious ones that could happen. Yeah. Okay, so uh, catching you up, Amelia. We met over 2,000 years ago. Oh, there you go. You just want to burn stuff. <laughs> Look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's fine. Now we're figuring out objects. Okay, um, so I'm sorry, you're, you're going to be Highlanders. Highlander Immortals, yep, okay. uh, that met over 2,000 years previous to the uh, present day uh, final gathering. Mm -hmm. And we broke up uh, probably like early-ish 1900s okay. um, and haven't seen each other for decades before we met for the final like duel to the death. Oh, okay. So you're going into this duel in the to the death. You've broken up? Yeah. Already. Yeah. Oh, okay. And now we have to face each other one last time. Uh, and, and one of us is either going to lose our immortality or possibly kill the other. That's so good. That's such a good mashup. The other thing you could do for this is you could have the breakup scene could be the duel if you wanted to people wanted to play it that way if they were thinking of it that way that you could easily do that because the thing about the breakup scene is it's it doesn't follow the normal ritual procedure instead mm. of like one person saying remember when the other person says but you forgot about you um remember the breakup scene the same way so you sort of decide together where you break up what the details are how it happens and so you could um that is just another way that someone could yeah. do that final scene 
Absolutely. Uh, if we were doing this yeah. uh, with with the other game as yeah. well, um, I can see us doing the breakup previously and then yeah. all of that emotional weight yeah. going into the game itself oh, would so be good. phenomenal. Ah, so good. Yeah. So I have an the object. breakup is the duel is like mm -hmm. high stakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right, so objects. Um, I have one. My, yeah. my father's fishing boat from our fishing village, from my fishing village. Okay. I've got an object. Um, my, my legacy sword. Oof. You have to break that. Yep. A painting of you painted by me. Oh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> our original marriage certificate equivalent from the middle ages yeah so like the probably what that would be would be um the like re the record the wedding record book basically from the church yeah, yeah. which is interesting because i wrote down you're gonna take everybody down with you yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> so mine was kind of that's interesting because my next one i wrote was before you even said that was a stained glass window so i'm gonna oh. i'm gonna make sure from the church <laughs> so i'm adding from, that detail from the church that we got married yeah at. of course i'm wow. adding that detail now oh amazing oh yikes okay uh i wrote a letter from you pretty simple oh that's very good i'm gonna say um a recording of us singing together uh, when that was first, like, introduced technology-wise. Yeah, I love that. Wow. That's really good. I kind of went to the same place you did in my mind of, like, time. And I was going to do something like, let's see. Um, oh, I'm, um, I'm not very good with years of cars, but I was going to do like a, a car, like a, like a, like a sixties era Chevelle or something. Mm. My son asked me if they had cars in the sixties. <laughs> and I was like, you have ridden in a 68 Mustang. Like my dad has a 68 yeah. Mustang. Oh, well, they go back to the twenties, right? And they go back to like 1902. Yeah, the first yeah, car true. was like 1902. Well, when do we want to break up? I guess is the question, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, we said, do we want yeah. like to? Because uh, uh, I was almost thinking like the the flappers era, mm. uh, like the, the roaring twenties. So yeah, it could be like oh, uh, like a uh, yeah that like that era. I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna put classic car as there my object, go. and then like in the course of play, you might inspire you to. It could inspire any number of scenes. Yeah. I love it. Um. Let's see. Okay. Um. A book of poetry I wrote about you after we first met. Oh, so good. Do they know it's about them? I think they would have eventually, yeah. Okay. Which is now, what, almost 2,000 years old, which is mm -hmm. wild. That is wild. I So I have five objects, so I went ahead and wrote a little brief description of my character. Nice. I, I need one more object okay. uh, that spans all of time. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. I think it should be some like flowers you picked together at some point. Some like dried flowers that like you picked on like, I like the high cliffs. You preserved them somehow. Yeah. Oh, like uh, maybe preserved uh, a flower in some amber. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Uh, from when we uh, first started courting. Oh. Yep. Goodness. This game is not for those who don't like feelings. I know, right? <laughs> okay. So did we want to read down our list like we did uh, with Amelia Please and I? do, because I think I missed a couple. Yep. All right. So my objects were my legacy sword, um, our original marriage certificate equivalent <laughs> uh, from the Middle Ages, uh, which we, we decided was like a wedding record book. Um a recording of us singing together from the dawn of recording equipment. <laughs> That's my favorite one of these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a book of poetry I wrote about you after <laughs> we first met. So rough. A preserved flower in amber from when we first started courting. Mine are my father's fishing boat from my fishing village. A painting of you painted by me. Stained glass window from the church where we got married an old letter from you, and a classic car. Amazing. Yours are big. 
Yeah. Get a boat, a car, a window. You know what? It's because, <laughs> see, this is because, like, I haven't gotten to do that in a game really where, like, yeah. I, I like because I've found so many real objects to break, my desire with the Popsicle Stick version of the game is to always come up with just, like, stuff that would be so hard to actually break in real life. That you could never do. That's, yeah. I love yeah, it. That's kind of why I always just default to that when I'm doing it that way. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Um, I wonder because uh, when uh, you create a character in in my game, you you choose one of the archetypes. Yeah. Um. It it almost feels like, uh, I, I guess depends on what you want to be for for your character and for for my character. Like one of us would be the love interest, and one of them would could either be the hero, the villain, mm. uh, the uh, the best friend, mm. uh, the uh, gosh, what is the other ones? Oh, the observer. Uh, like somebody that's tried to remain neutral throughout mm. all of history. Mm. Um, and then there is, uh, there's one more like side character. The dark um, magician. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> that's why I don't play this game. <laughs> right. Uh, but it, 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 it leans into those Highlander tropes yeah. for types of characters and stuff. Well, if you so, have um, to battle each other in the final battle after having broken up, like, what do you think the two best options for archetypes, like, in a, like to end up being those would be? I mean, hero and villain is pretty obvious. We could that could be, but there are uh, I think there's other ways to do it, right? You could be yeah, I the think best friend if, is if, a good one. Sorry, best best friend is definitely a good one. Um, yeah, I wonder if just best friend and love interest yeah. would be a, a good combo. I think that's the one. That's that's to me. That's the one that hurts me. That's the what most. makes my heart. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because like the design of the game is you're there with two others, right? Okay. So there's four all together, and uh, so best friend and uh, the love interest and whoever else. Yeah. So it's like, do we team up at first? Do yeah. We, oh, that's so brutal. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the scenario that the two of you always knew could be a possibility and you never wanted to talk about or admit. I mean, that's the thing. And then you, I would imagine right. that the conversation would come up through playing the 10 scenes of Broken. Like, you, yeah, you've you've literally had each other's back for yeah. 1500 years. Yeah. Right. Oh, and like, brutal. you know that it'll come down to this at some point, but we just don't speak of it. Uh huh. Because if we do, that's the end of things. Uh huh. And oh, now here it is. Goodness gracious. Look, okay. I learned Highlander things. <laughs> I know. Aren't you proud of me? I am. <laughs> so uh brief descriptions. Yeah. Um gosh. I oh I need a name too. Do you want me to read you mine sis? while you're doing that? Yeah. So my what I wrote is my name is Cristaldo Mano. And uh, I go by Chris now. In the in the modern day, but Cristaldo is a tall, dark-haired Italian man with deep, sensitive brown eyes, olive skin, and rough hands. Oh, that's good. The hands of a fisherman. Yeah, per se. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, what's a good name that pairs well with that? Um. What What are your What are your gender feelings? <laughs> Gosh, I could go either uh, pretty much anyway on this one. Um, yeah, I think in uh, classic classic Highlander, uh, uh, she, her pronouns. Um, gosh, like uh, I, I think a, like a good Spanish name would be nice in this scenario. A good Spanish lady name. Yeah. Um, I mean, Isabella is oh that's oh, good that is a good one and what was your character's last name mono m-a-n-n-o okay i think she probably took your name mm -hmm. uh when they got married and she never let it go oh, <laughs> oh boy <laughs> <laughs> this is fine everything's fine <laughs> great okay um yeah yeah so yeah she's uh she's a, a well-dressed uh, uh spanish uh, woman uh with uh long flowing dark hair um and a uh a sleek rapier uh for her preferred sword Whew. i love it yeah oh 
Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, so should we break hearts again? Now, now we well, we need traits now, right? The traits. Oh, you guys still do your traits. Yeah. Oh my god, we haven't even made it as bad as it could be yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> but your your character I already got my first one cooking here. Oh yeah. my god. Here I am thinking I can't get any worse. <laughs> I don't remember how we did it with Amelia, but do you want to? Do we read them as we go or all at once? I forget how we did it. Um, we did. We did both. We read them like back and forth as we went, and then yeah. did a summary. At yeah. The end. So the one I, the one you inspired immediately was, um, the way you're fighting is like dancing. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I went with uh, the depth of your gaze. Mm-hmm. The way she smells like lilies all of the time. Ooh. It's evocative. Uh, the soothing sound of your heartbeat when we embrace. Yes. So how do you get dis- disillusioned with that? You're like, ugh, your heartbeat, it's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it becomes more like a telltale heart sort of thing. Ooh. Yeah, it would be really interesting to see how that one you'd end up being delicious. Yeah. You probably, I mean, my instinct having played the game is probably you'd become disillusioned with like the embrace aspect of it. So like the person's probably. touch or the way they hold them or something like that mm. would um, yeah. would change through the through some scene um, and through something that would happen between the two of you, the touching. Yeah, but I do like yeah. telltale heart. I do. I like that too. No, the heartbeat <laughs> would be really, if you could come up with a way to do it about the heartbeat itself, that would be really wild. It's like suddenly I'm uh. so aware of all the times you're lying. Lying to me, mm, oh yeah, or or like maybe maybe Isabella wasn't a hundred percent faithful, and so every time she hears your heartbeat, um, it she like feels guilty, feels guilty, uh, or something. Ugh. Mm-mm. Well, that made me write down. She never ever lies to me. <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh! Why? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but yes, but no. Uh-huh. <laughs> but but yes. But yes. <laughs> um I put uh but those fishermen's hands though. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> those hands though. <laughs> Love it. This would also be kind of an interesting one to get disillusioned with, but uh I like the challenge. I wrote years feel like minutes and minutes feel like years together. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Um, always charming in social situations. Mm-hmm. Love it. And my last one that I have is, <laughs> I feel like no one could ever hurt me when we're together. <laughs> and if I was stacking uh, these, I would definitely stack that one last without a yeah, doubt. Yeah, right before the duel. Yeah, exactly. No one can hurt me. Exactly. Except uh-huh. you, yeah. with um, your sword. <laughs> Exactly. You, you have always had my back. Yeah, that's good. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> wow. Yep. Wow is right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Doing these in a row where you're making these characters these ga- and not playing them is kind of brutal because it's like, oh, here's one <laughs> gut wrenching scenario and here's another gut wrenching scenario. Uh-huh. And here's another gut wrenching yep. scenario. Oh, it's so yep. good, though. That's yes. what we do here. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yep. We just hurt feelings. Exactly. Break hearts. That's what, well, that's what the game is meant to do. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So now is that? Yeah. Now, now it's it? you two. Now it's our turn. All okay. right. Any inspiration yet at all, Amelia? What are you thinking? I'm kind of thinking I would like to. I know we've done two kind of like fantasy yeah. sort of ones already. So I'm thinking I would either like to do something that's like hyper realistic yeah. or I want to do like space. So, oh, you, oh, you presented me with a like a devil's bargain. I know no, it's I, the unanswerable yeah. question. It is because, like, I I feel that about like being a king. What realist- if it's just like hyper realistic in space? Okay, okay. What if we're just yes. like regular yes, people yes, doing yes. our regular thing in space? In space in the future. I love that. Oh. I love okay. that. I love that. I love All that. right. Yes, so, yes, do yes. we want to like flesh out the scenario slightly more before doing the objects? Yeah, or we you- probably should. Okay. Yeah. So, how about if we are um, people who? live on a space station uh do you, mm-hmm. you do you think more are you when you say space are you thinking like more um star trek or star wars type fantasy like uh fantasy in space or like um really I'm we said kind of so. like yeah i mean I'm, I'm thinking more star trek yeah kind of i mean mm. and at this point when i'm talking about like normal people and space, yeah. like i'm thinking like we're dealing with like the daily the ins and outs yep. of space bureaucracy yep 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 i love that know? You know, um, like I'd like to be like a customs agent or something. I love that. 
a customs agent is good because the space station, like people are coming through the space station. They have to go through customs all the time. And oh, is it too much of a, okay, so this is a good safety. Would you like to also be a customs agent? Well, my question was going to be, and this is a safety thing I think we would have to talk about as far as a, like a safety conversation is, um, yeah. what if uh, what if I'm your boss or you're my boss? One of us is the other person's boss. There's a power dynamic okay. there. So that's where there's right. a safety conversation. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm certainly fine with that. Um, do you, I mean, do you want to be my boss? That's fine. Well, it does. You I don't, don't like being, those. I don't like being in charge of things. Okay. Uh, I can be your <laughs> boss. That's fine. Okay. It just, in, it adds an interesting power dynamic. I think that you, people who would play that would have to be really careful with safety tools right. and be on the same page about how that would go. And so that way it doesn't cross anyone's lines. So I'm thinking... In, in this scenario yeah. that like we worked together in customs for a while like mm -hmm. maybe that's how we met we knew each other your promotion is like a recent thing mm -hmm. oh i love and that. i think that's kind of what's starting to drive a wedge that's into really good this. yeah 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 that's that's super super good i love that love it do we want to name the space station just for fun i don't know if we can come up with a good i space mean station probably name. we should name it um <laughs> i just want to call it ever light hunting I don't know what that I don't means, know why. but it's. I don't. It doesn't mean anything. No, but I was like, great. those are words that together I like. Okay. No, <laughs> I. I think that's fabulous. Space station, Everlight hunting. <laughs> Do you want to throw a number on the end there to yeah. make it even more like yeah. authentic? Uh, Ryan, why don't you throw a number? Uh, seven. Oh, thanks. Ever Everlight hunting seven. Yeah. Now we've got the name of the television series that this <laughs> takes place in. Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so do you want to do any more details we should flesh out, or do you want to do objects? Uh, I'm okay doing objects. Cool. Let's do it. All right. Uh, I'm going to say my first object is my badge from my very first day. Nice. Uh, my first or object. Maybe from training. It's like from training. Yeah. My first object is a communicator. Um, a package of some kind of very rare food stuff that is technically illegal but i stole for a fancy date night one time that's so funny you said that because my mind literally went to food too i was like okay what's the thing i could do with food because it's the way to someone's heart <laughs> yeah so actually i'm gonna say for my next object um because this is where my mind went before you said that but i'm gonna roll with it and, and say it. a replicator because it's kind of the opposite a food yeah. replicator. So it's the opposite of what you your object. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love it. And that could be really interesting to see how that would play out. I'm going to say a note that I wrote I passed you at work one day. That's like a yes, no. Do you want to go on a date? Oh, and that's so good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wrote a plush doll of the space station mascot because I decided the space oh, station has a mascot. So I, I love it. I'm, I don't know what her name is, but I'm picturing the mascot of the space station is like a little huntress with a bow and arrow. It's like the opposite <gasps> of yeah. like space. It's like very. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Like very Artemis. Yeah. Maybe that's her name. Maybe that's her name. Yeah. Maybe it's Artemis is the space station mascot. I love that. <laughs> love it. Okay. What do I have? Three things. One more thing. Two more things. Um. I wrote a commander's chair. Ooh. Do you move it into our living room just to prove your point? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Right, a book of rules and regulations. I love that one. That's a really good one. All right. My fifth object is a picture of me with the Admiral on the day of my promotion. Ooh. Uh. Fine. My fifth object is going to be a picture of us. On our first day together. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Oh, did you start working at the same time? Yeah, I think we were in that same like training class. Oh, that's amazing. Yep, it's incredible. Which is why it sucks that you got promoted and I didn't. <laughs> Not that I'm bitter about it at all. <laughs> but all you, right. you've proven you don't like to be a leader. It's okay. I don't want you to be one either, though. I just wanted to keep <laughs> doing what we were doing. <laughs> then it makes things I awful. loved what we had. <laughs> okay, so now. So we can do write we our names and like a. Yeah, it, names. Okay. A name and a short description of, of your character. Um, oh, gosh. Space names are even harder than real names. And I also don't know any um, like military order of things. Oh, yeah. I'm not great at that either, so I'm not going to do a military. Uh, okay. I, well, I'm not going to do a military rank. I, I made a military 
I was thinking of a military implication to the to my look, but right. Um, but not. I'm not going to bother with a rank or anything like that. Okay. So, hmm. names, 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 space names. Yeah, I picked a very not space name very intentionally, just because we're like very normal people in space. Good point. Good point. So, um, do you want me to tell you you mind while you're thinking, or do you need to just think? Yeah, go ahead. So I created Alex Jordan. They have short, cropped, blonde hair. I'm thinking that they are like, I was kind of imagining that they're ex-military turned like customs agent. Like mm-hmm. they kind of went civilian or maybe they just left like more frontline military service for like, uh, for this type, type of posting. If this is a military job, which it doesn't matter to me, which, you know, yeah. which it is. Uh, but they have short, cropped, blonde hair. They're also short in height. Um but strong, short, but strong and very fast. That is my description I wrote. Okay. Um, so I named my person Cressida Wilson. Love it. Cressida. Uh, Chris, fast. Cressida. Very fascinating. Uh, crisp uniform, hair pulled back in a tight bun, stands up very straight. Um, like picture of like, this is what your uniform should look like. Mm, I love at that. All t- at all times. Yes. That's great. Great. Awesome. Now we can do five traits. Oh, boy. <laughs> you gave you almost gave me one, but I have to use it because I feel like it would be a waste if I didn't. But okay. uh, the way uh, what are your pronouns? Uh, she, her. OK. And what are yours? They, them. The way I, I'm writing something like how do I want to phrase it? The way she makes a military uniform sing. <laughs> his dedication to his job. Oh, sorry, there. There. Hmm. There. Okay. She's not afraid to break a rule every now and then. Ooh. But actually, I'm terrified of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. I'm trying to look at what we put for our objects too. A willingness to try new things. How much we laugh together. Oh, I just thought of a good one. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I'm going to just put uh, love of interesting foods. Yeah, that's good. I wrote her devotion to family. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> I'm going to... Can I put the same thing? Can I also put their devotion to family? You can. And the other thing that can happen sometimes in this game is people become very naturally disillusioned with the same traits that, like, or with the same, either the same trait, the same. That's happened before where, like, two people, like, without even knowing it, it's like, oh, that we basically wrote the same thing. So you could become disillusioned at the same time and end up burning them together. And then you just play one less scene. And I like the idea, too, of becoming disillusioned with them at different times. Yes. It's very, also very possible. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, oh, you got this new promotion and you don't actually like your Mm -hmm, Exactly. It can have very different (laughs) meaning, like, for depending on each character. It could look one way for one and one way for the other. Yeah. Definitely. So Um, my last one I wrote is she is willing to stand up to authority. And I would definitely stack that last. (laughs) I am going to put um, their joyful laugh. Aw, that's nice. Um, And I think I'm going to put dedication to work last okay cool well there we go great we did it love it this is why you don't date people at work (laughs) 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 yeah i will say that i think that that like that got easier the more time like you know i did it and then watched you guys do it and then now did it myself too i think it got easier every time too Mm -hmm. which is always a good a good measure of like does this thing make sense Mm. Does the yeah. order make sense if I can pick up on it after a time or two? Yeah, I, I have definitely gotten pretty quick with making with doing this process, having played a lot of the, yeah. the game a lot of times. Uh, you know, you kind of learn the kinds of things that work for you for it anyway. Because that's the thing is like, I don't know what works for other people that much because, I, you know, unless I've played with them. You've never been in other people? What's that? <laughs> I said you've never been other yeah, people. Yeah, I've never been other people, so I don't know what works for other people. Weird. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs>
Amazing. Yeah, this was fantastic. I think the, the part I struggled with when we're trying to uh, create objects and picking from literally anything, yeah. um, oh, yeah. I See, can imagine I loved... that this works a lot better from, or a lot like, oh, this object looks interesting in the thrift store, and then creating a story from that sounds fascinating yes uh but like this 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 is great too but like it took a little bit more thought energy sure uh, i had a harder time with the traits honestly did you? um just because I, I i think because i knew what was going to happen with them later yeah. yeah it was like i want them to be evocative enough that they can really kind of make something of those scenes but not enough that i'm like i've written the scene yeah. for you you know yep. but also like it, it it does still feel um this is something that came up in our Starcross series way back in series three. There's something about it that is like slightly uncomfortable to me to like define something about somebody else's character. Yes. Yeah. That there is a level of agency there that I'm like, even if I know you're totally cool with it and I know that it's going to all like, I'm like, oh, but I'm writing things about you mm -hmm. and you're here and you're going to see them. Yep. <laughs> and I made choices for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. That I'm still like a little bit like as a player, there's there's still a part in the back of my brain that's like, that's a no. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I have to like turn that off for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, it's okay. That, it's that okay throws in this that situation. trust out there. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 But yeah. The, the, the fact that both the traits and the objects get broken yeah. yes. throughout gameplay is phenomenal yep. <laughs> and like a dagger to the heart for everyone you throw out there. I had that's what I said. I was like, it is brutal. My notes say it is brutal. Yeah. I had somebody uh, <laughs> listen, like, I, I forget what they, I think it was, they might have watched the Alchemist's stream. I forget what stream, but they watched or listened to us play Broken uh, and just commented on it in a Discord channel and basically said that, like, they knew when they heard the process of creating the traits for the other person that they probably could never play this game <laughs> because yeah. it's just like yeah. that was the moment they were like nope. I mean it's interesting it's I I have to like I look at Ryan and I'm like Ryan and I know each other well enough yeah and have you know been doing character creation and kind of talking about what we want out of games for four yeah. years we've done mm -hmm. nothing but yeah. we've never we have played one game wow. together <laughs> yeah. um, but in four years we've done nothing basically but talk about what we want out of games yeah. and ryan is the kind of person i could play this with yeah mm -hmm. i struggle to think of almost anybody else that i could sit down and be like okay let's see what happens yeah, yeah. um after reading this because it was like it's so gut-wrenching and mm -hmm. and knowing what you wanted out of it and you know like when you sent it to me you were like hey can you look it over as somebody who's also been through divorce yeah. and all of that kind of stuff yeah. so like looking at it through that lens and being like my heart it hurts yeah, yeah. um <laughs> you know that like this definitely isn't for everybody and that's for sure. okay for mm -hmm. sure it's okay if you listen to this and you're like that is too much yeah. yeah just know that i also think maybe possibly for me too much yeah. but oh, i want it so bad yeah. <laughs> we take safety very seriously with the game too so actually yeah. one thing i can talk about on here that i haven't talked about publicly too much yet just because it was still kind of pending but we do have a safety designer for the game and that's uh, someone people probably know which is bo yeager sheldon who created the script change uh, oh, cool. safety tool set is our is our uh, safety designer for this game and nice. consultant so that's awesome yeah so bo is going to basically be the final version of this game that we if you know that we fund will be will have a, a, some more safety designed in, into the rules and one of the things that Bo and I talked about was that that mo like Bo even pointed it out that there is um just the potential like this when you make traits for somebody else just like making sure that you have consent in that process is is important mm -hmm. so uh yeah we take we take safety for this game very very seriously because like yeah. bleed is going to happen in this game it's going like well and this yeah. is a game that's designed to do yeah, that exactly. like it's not yeah. even just a byproduct of the yeah. game this is a game that is designed to encourage that kind of bleed. exactly yeah. and so yeah I'm, I'm glad that um i'm glad that you have somebody on just to help with that yeah. part of it i know that like yeah. you definitely from the beginning have had safety mechanics yes. written in there yes. and listed in there and in there um very clear like here's what you should and should not do yes but um, I'm glad to hear that you've got somebody coming on to help just kind of um, oversee all, see it in all of the yeah. little places where it could come exactly. up. Because I think that it can show up in places that you don't expect it sometimes, yeah, too. exactly. Especially as a designer, when you've looked at a game for hundreds and hundreds of hours, you mm -hmm. start to, like, your eyes kind of glaze over parts of it. And 
you know, 100%. Have, to have fresh eyes. Exactly. No, that's why <laughs> I knew I needed to, I, I knew from the very beginning I wanted to have a safety designer that was not me be, for that very reason so that I don't miss something. And yeah. Well, and yeah. it sounds like this project in general is really close to your heart too. So like, yeah. I think that that adds another level of complexity yep. in making sure that it it works for everybody else yeah. too, you know? Exactly. Absolutely. Ryan, where are we on here? We're on the very last question, if there's anything. Okay. Uh, well, did yeah. we want to, do we want to ask him any more about like a session zero or, you know, because we, we did our character creation stuff. Is there any other stuff that you think on that safety note that you think people should kind of think about or go through for a session zero? Definitely. Of the Yeah, game? definitely. So I would say people should talk about like rating, which is something from script, you know, that script change talks about, which is, uh, you know, deciding right from the beginning, are we talking about a PG game here? Are we talking about <laughs> when I was playing with my spouse over the weekend, I said, are we going to play this PG, PG 13? Are we going to be play it X? Double X, triple X, quadruple X. And of course, because my because it's my spouse, she's like, every t- X, X I add, she's just like making this face that gets more extreme every time I say the X's. <laughs> because people don't know, like my spouse and I have played the, our co-host of Pot of Love, which is a romance. I didn't even say this at the beginning of the show, but I, I, you know, we have been making Pot of Love for five years, which is a romance and relationship actual play podcast. And so mm-hmm. like we've played a ton of like romance games together like lots of romance kinds of games you were on our episode to talk about playing romance and games too so you know like you are not shy about like what it's like to play out those kinds of well exactly but the funny thing about that is that mel very much is a like off off screen person when it comes to like Gotcha. Like, you know, like mm. very much like um, when we play these games, Mel is very much like uh, a, uh, you know, it's fine to insinuate, but, you know, we're not going to play out. We fade too. to black. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's why when I said X, double X, triple X, I was like teasing my, like, you know, Ooh. teasing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I would say people should talk about rating, talk about like the content of the scenes, sort of the general feel. And rating is also important for like genre, like tone and genre, because like when we played Alchemist, is like it was going to be an anime so you know like you're talking about like pg at well i guess you're not necessarily yeah. but we played it as like a pg style mm-hmm. like high, these were high school characters right because it's alchemist right. and like there was one kiss and that was like the extent of pda in that game and like mm-hmm. um but it was it meant so much because it was one kiss. Some of those, sometimes yeah. that's the most powerful. So, so I would say discussing that kind of thing at the session zero, like what your expectations are for that, depending on like what kind of safety tools people want to use. If they wanted to implement things like lines and veils for themselves or include an X card, you know, I would say you would talk about that there. Uh, but yeah, I think that's basically all you would need um, to go ahead and, you know, get started playing. You should also talk about physical safety a little bit, too, if you're going to yeah. break the physical objects, because oh, yeah. th- because <laughs> I did see that like safety glasses yep. and, you know, yeah, uh-huh. yep. all that kind of yep. stuff. So too. like, yeah. where are you going to break them? What are you going to do with the things once they're broken? That's a real question that you should talk about. Yeah. Do you 100%. and maybe like I don't know if this one goes without saying or not, but I mentioned it in the rule book, like breaking objects that are yours to break. <laughs> and so yeah. oh, yes. you know, maybe <laughs> can't hurt to talk about that too. Burning things over here. Just my smoke. <laughs> I got my burn proof bowl. I'm gonna use it, darn I was, it. I was. I was. Gosh, like I didn't bring it for nothing. Yeah, it's so good. It. So yeah, I would think those are the yeah, things like that you should talk about. I can't think of anything else that I would say you would want to cover. In a session zero. Fire alarms start going off. <laughs> yeah. See, I know now I'm like, I should put something over this. So like, anyway, it's fine. I'm listening. It's fine. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, it's very cool. Is there anything then from the crowdfunding campaign that you'd like to highlight? Yeah, I probably should, right? That would make sense if mm-hmm. I were to do that. So we are crowdfunding this in mid-July. The The goal is for the crowdfunding to kick off. Uh, we are itch funding the game to to crowdfund this game. So we're using itch.io um, to okay. itch fund the game. And that's going to kick off on... Uh, God willing, uh, that's going to kick <laughs> off on July 19th. And okay. um, so there's some really easy links to that. If, if someone is coming to the game before it goes live in July, um, you can just go to apongames.itch.io slash broken. And that is the mm-hmm. page for the game. Uh, and so, yeah, that's where people can go and they can back the game. And um, if you back the game for $15, you can get the full digital copy of the game. You can get the 
Ashcan version immediately, which is the full playable game with color and art. And it's a really beautiful version of the game that people can just download. Like you'll just get it immediately if you back the game and then you'll get the final edition, the final ebook once it's done for that $15 level. And then um, there are some extra stuff that people can do if they want. Like um, uh, there is uh, a play with the author level if people are interested in that kind of thing. But uh, oh, yeah, so that that's that's the campaign. I don't know if the, I, I'm, I'm new to selling the campaign. So if, I don't know if I forget anything i should be saying to y'all but um but yeah but we can we'll retweet stuff too as it goes on um because i'm so excited about this game have been excited about it for months um even though it took me (laughs) like two months to get back to you about it um oh stupid life yeah right Um, like this was (laughs) It's. I mean, it's just such a good game, and I, mm-hmm. I think I really like knowing what you were setting out to do with it. Like you just hit the nail Thank on you. the head. Like you hit every mark of Absolutely. like what I would want in a game like this. And it's I'm just, so I'm so thrilled for it to be out in the world and for people yeah. to see it. Thank you so much for saying that. It really means a lot to hear it. It's it's really deeply appreciated, more than I can tell you. And I am also very excited for it to be out in the world. almost desperate yeah. at this point for it to be out in the world for other people to play and to experience and to read so i don't yeah. know if we asked this at the beginning usually we ask but how long were you working on this one before yeah. you like yeah put it out in the thank world? you for asking i broken was been in my brain since around the time when we started pot of love five years ago in 2017 there was a a yeah. version of it in my mind like i knew or at least that i wanted to do it i knew i i i that story would be too long to tell right now, but like yeah. as part of my processing for divorce, as part of telling my divorce story, I realized that the only way that I felt like for me personally, I could do that well was to create this game. Like, I don't know why, but mm-hmm. that was like the way I felt like I needed to process it. So I yeah. I knew I wanted to do that. The inspiration for it, for exactly how it was going to take shape, really, um, really came around the time we were making Pot of Love very regularly and Starcross had come out not too long beforehand. And I was inspired by all the games we were playing on that show. I was inspired by Starcross and I just I just had this desire to make a tragic game. I was like, well what if I made a romance yeah. game but I took a tragic take on it. So But like yeah. the other side of it. Yeah. 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 So there was yeah. an early there's actually an early version of the game that doesn't have these rules. It's a very different game that we actually recorded yeah. to tell a story on Pot of Love back in the day. So that's a couple of years old now. Um and so yeah, the game's been in different forms for a while and and I needed to set it aside for a little bit uh in sure. order to like process it because I was like the, I, I was missing something dramatic that I needed from the game. And actually, the thing that I was missing that I finally came back to was breaking objects, which is now yeah. the core and heart of like the game. The core yeah. center of the game. Yeah. yeah. And the part that really like caught me, like I said, is, yeah. is so cathartic. Yeah, exactly. And so mm-hmm. um, I, I think what makes almost I don't want to say what makes it playable yeah. because like it's it's a it's a wonderfully playable game. But yeah. I think what. Um, yeah. It, it tones down some of the sharp pain of it almost yeah. because you have the catharsis of breaking things in between exactly. that feels mm-hmm. healing. Yeah. Is it like I my design objective from the very beginning was that I wanted to design something where the mechanics of the game mirrored the like topic and the theme and the content of the mm-hmm. game. And that's a kind of hard thing to set out to do. It is to do. Yeah. Like how what 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 content does dice rolling really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like a whole new thing. And the funny thing mm-hmm. is that I knew the game was called Broken before I came up with the breaking object. So it was almost like it was staring me in the face. And so <laughs> You're like, oh come yeah. on, self. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I realized, that's oh incredible. my gosh, uh it solved a bunch of design problems I had all at the same yeah. time when I realized that was the game. It was like, you know sometimes writers are like man i hope this doesn't sound pretentious or something but you know sometimes writers are like i don't know it feels like the story comes from outside of myself and it's something i'm tapping into the design of this game process was that's that's how i feel often when i'm writing fiction and the design of this game was similar to that where like um it was like tapping into something like in this creative space i felt like coming from somewhere outside of myself so you know i don't well and i think you have to because again because it's such a a a topic that's like so close that it almost has to come from somewhere else to be anything coherent because otherwise it's just going to be too jump like there's just too many feelings yeah you know so it's like it has to be something outside of you something that you took that break to realize that you you know um that it sounds like you've treated with all of the care that it requires too 
So I'm I'm really excited Thanks. about where you've landed, and I'm so I'm so excited for people to see. As you say, it's very mm-hmm. much about That's, time for it to get out there now. It's been long right? enough. I'm ready. I would to, like it to not yep. be in my head anymore. Exactly. And out in the world, it's somebody else's problem. Now. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Broken. This was fantastic. I had mm-hmm. so much fun. Thank you both so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yeah. Do you want to remind everybody where they can find you online and what other things you have going on? Yep. So you can find the All Ports Open Network at allportsopen.com. I actually have a link tree if people want to find it. It's that gamer priest, and you can find all my links. Uh, you can find Apon Games, as I said before, on itch, uh, apongames.itch.io, and the, the our games that we release there. Uh, you, you know, you can you can hit follow, and then you get all of our like when a game goes live, you'll get notified. And you can follow me on Twitter at Benjamin Wallace. By the way, Wallace is spelled W A L L I S for listeners. So if you're finding me yes. on social media, it's at Benjamin Wallace, but spelled that way um yeah i think that's basically where people can find me very cool well uh thank you so much for joining us for this special bonus episode of character creation spotlight uh and thanks to everybody for tuning in uh do not forget to check out the broken crowdfunding campaign uh which might be going on right now uh or starting soon uh so we'll we'll figure out where that's going to go but Uh, Either way, uh, we will see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permissions from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero, remixed by Steve Combs, and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guest can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. gotta read some show blurbs show blurbs show blurbs show blurbs show blurbs character creation cast is hosted by the one shot podcast network if you enjoyed our show visit one shot podcast.com where you will find other great shows like one shot on one shot you can discover new rpgs through actual play Every week, James D'Amato brings you a new episode with a rotating cast of improvisers, game designers, and other notable nerds. OneShot has featured over 100 games, exploring a wide variety of genres and tones. The stories are self-contained, so you can jump in anywhere, and it's a great way to find your new favorite game. Discover the magic of RPGs with OneShot on your favorite podcast app. Woohoo! Hey. Should be good. Very strong, clicky. That uh, was there. I, I felt good was. about that one. I'm, I'm impressed. It's I've got some. I've got some good tea and honey, uh, fresh in there, and yeah, we got that like sweet honey voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's nice. <laughs> okay, are we ready? I'll be disappointed. I'm all set. I'm all okay. set. I will do a five count. Ryan will not laugh at my fingers, and then no, we'll start. I'm, I am. More I know you've gotten really good at it. I'm. I'm very impressed every time. I okay. No, it's good. <laughs> all right. What's in a game? 
you. I always want to say it. I know that you're gonna have to cut all of this noise out. But <laughs> it's, it's fine. I just want to say it. Uh. <laughs> and that's yeah. that's good. <laughs>